Now why would a guy who's already pretty busy with other stuff spend his spare time building something like this? Well, it's because very, very soon we could end up without the fuels that we've been used to. The petrol and the diesel and the natural gas and even the electricity might suddenly become quite scarce. So this series of videos is me doing my part for our combined energy sustainability. Follow me in this series of videos where I attempt to achieve energy autonomy. So let's start right at the beginning. The fuel hopper. Now the fuel hopper could be pretty much any size. I've opted for a 60 litre drum so that it keeps the thing a little bit more portable. Down the centre runs the air tube. That's the main inlet of air. More on that in a moment. The fuel needs to be a nice quality graded charcoal. You don't want big lumps and small lumps, you want everything to be uniform so that it flows and flows through the reactor in a smooth and controllable manner. This is that adjustable air valve. With this we can adjust how much air is going into the system to get just the kind of burn that we need. Down the bottom, we've got a lighting port. The lighting port is just a tube that goes straight in to the edge of the reaction zone. It's dark in there at the moment, but when it's operating, you'll see a nice, healthy, bright orange glow. We light it through there and close it up as soon as possible, and that transfers the suction to the main inlet which directs the air down on the inside into the burner which is inside the middle of the reaction zone here. Below the reaction zone we've got the ash door. Inside here you'll see that the ash from the previous burn is still there. I wanted to leave that in there so that you could see how much ash you'll get from approximately a two hour burn. Up above is the ash grate. That's made out of a cooking colander. That holds a bed of ash close up to the bottom of the embers to create what they call the reduction zone. Outside here we've got a lever that's connected to the ash pan and that's a shaker. Moving this agitates the grate and cleans out any excess ash. Gas from the reaction comes out through this tube. The first thing that happens to it is it goes into a primary radiator. It's rudimentary, just some metal fins welded to the outside of the pipe, but the gases lose 10 degrees Celsius from one end to the other. When the gases leave this primary radiator they go into the cyclone. The cyclone is made from two stainless steel buckets. The gases go in on an angle which forms a spiral action. This throws all of the particulates to the outside and they fall down and collect in this glass jar attached to the bottom. In the glass jar is a residue of soot that also is what's in there from a two hour run. Once the gases have spun in the cyclone and those particulates have been removed, there's a dead zone down the centre. The air is drawn from that dead zone and comes up through this pipe and that is fed across here and into the main heat exchanger. You can see that the main heat exchanger is made out of a domestic oil fin radiator. It works really, really well. The hot end is at the top. As the gases get pushed down, they progressively cool until they get to the bottom. And when they leave here, at the end, from there on the gases are cool enough to go into plastic piping. This saves weight and some expense. 
when the gas is empty the first thing they do is come across to a T-piece on either side of that T-piece there's a tap so that I can control the flow but the tap isn't placed directly on the T-piece I've found that by moving the taps to other positions it still has the same effect the flow is uh, directed one way or the other but it provides me with two bonus functions the first is that any condensation that builds up inside the radiator of course drips down to the bottom and goes to the lowest point the lowest point from the bottom of the radiator just happens to be down here at the entrance to the main filter that means that the main filter can also act as a con as a second condensation reservoir and that gets drained with a drain bung on the bottom of the filter here inside the filter it's empty at the moment but you can see that the inlet at the bottom allows the gas to come up and it'll eventually be drawn through this port here at the top in between I can experiment with a whole heap of different media I can use sacking old carpet screwed up newspaper knit curtain chunks of foam rubber whatever I feel might be a good medium as a dust and moisture filter when the gases leave there they come up here and this is what stops and starts the flow of course when you turn it off here it stops the flow right down there at the T-piece and directs it the other way there's no need to have the tap down there in an inaccessible place but the moisture can still carry on and the moisture will go into this bucket from here the gases come along and go into a flexible pipe which I don't have here and that will take it to the generator, the chipper, the mower whatever internal combustion engine up to 30 horsepower that I'm using this to fuel but to ensure that we've got a pure combustible gas before we start passing it to the motor the most important thing to do is check the status of the gas and that's most easily done by turning on the flare so during the warm-up phase this tap is open this tap is closed and that will bring the air this way through the electric 12 volt fan and up the tube to the flare pipe that you saw burning in the previous video so we check the color of the flame we can also keep an eye on how long it's taking for that flame to form and it's a an indication of the performance of the, of the machine because the different parameters that can vary are the design the temperature of the day and the quality of the fuel there's a few things that I haven't got right one of them is this fan is not strong enough to pull through all this pipe work and through this radiator so I've now spent some money and I've bought a second fan that's going to be mounted in the middle of here I'm just waiting for the correct size adapters so that I can bring it out to the body size of the powerful fan but I'll just Siamese these wires and I'll be able to run both of these fans either independently or as a team I'll have individual controls for them both now one thing that I haven't explained in any of the videos so far is what's with the water container well the water container will have a drip tap on the bottom here and from here it will be copper pipe that runs down and into the center of the burner so that two drips of water per second can be delivered the addition of the water at two drips a second coming down and into here encourages more hydrogen gas to be brought into the mixture because the mixture of wood gas is carbon dioxide methane and carbon monoxide by adding the water we're adding hydrogen to that mix as well 
One of the other things that I didn't quite get right is hinging the lid. Because I've hinged the lid and I didn't get the pivot point of the lid at exactly the correct height to put enough preload onto this smoke proof gasket around the outside it's not making good contact it's leaking slightly at the back my idea is to remove this band across here and I'll make a new hinge arrangement that pushes down with a spring in the center of this lid and provides a nice even self-alignment so that this thing can pivot as needed and will sit wherever it needs to on the lid of on the lip of the drum Aside from that, I'm pretty pleased with it. Only two things that aren't working as I hoped. Everything else seems to be just fine. So I've been a bit held up with the weather and waiting for things to arrive. But now that I have this massive fan, I'm looking forward to be able to get on with that and doing this modification to the lid. I'll do that over the next couple of days and I'm looking forward to having you back in about two days time for the next video where we do the second burn and we compare the results of that burn with the previous first burn to see how giving the thing a little bit more power will affect both the fire up time and the colour of the gas which of course is the pretty much the best indicator of how the thing's performing. Don't forget to check out the other videos in the series and if you're enjoying this why not subscribe to the channel that way you'll get a notification each time I drop a new vid. in this series of videos where I attempt to achieve energy autonomy. Autonomy. Follow me in this series of videos where I attempt to achieve enemy. Follow me in this series of videos where I attempt to achieve energy autonomy. Autonomy. <laughs> Follow me in this series of videos where I attempt to achieve energy autonomy. Is that it? I got it that time, eh?